Hi, my name is Ken Guffey Miller. Uh, Trojan Baseball Alumni is documenting uh, for the purpose of storing for future uh, people during the uh, time that want to look at SC and see how we lived in the years past. And today we're talking to ball players that made the Hall of Fame at USC. And next to me right here is Steve Kemp. Uh, Steve played 11 years in the major leagues. He was an All-American at USC, played on national championship teams in 73 and 74. And he had a batting average, seasonal batting average of 435 and a career batting average of, of three, what was it? Three, uh, whatever you said, 397 <laughs> was a career batting average. And that both of those are still records at USC. Yeah, he holds a record. So uh, today I'd like to just sort of ask Steve a little bit about his early career, uh, how, where he grew up, uh, where he's from. Did he uh, play ball in other sports? And uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your youth uh, growing up uh, so that everybody get an idea about you, Steve? Well, Ken, when uh, I was really young, probably like five, I think I got my first baseball glove and I just had a, a love for the game of baseball, yeah. you know, a passion. And I did other sports also. Um, you know, in my day, you didn't play a sport all year round. Like today, kids will play right. in the season, but then they'll be on travel teams and stuff like that. I loved all their sports. I played football, basketball, track. Um, but then uh, once I got to a point in high school and I wasn't very big and I mm -hmm. thought, I'd probably be better if I didn't do this football thing anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Were you good in those sports, though? Um, I could hold my own. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, on a basketball team, I got MVP of the basketball team. That's great. Um, football, I played quarterback and defensive back. I think sports, are, for me, were a way um, to stay grounded mm -hmm. and was really probably my identity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think from a very, very young age, I, I believed and I had a passion for baseball. And, um, you know, I was going to become a major league baseball player. When did you first think about that? At a young, young age? Or? Yeah, probably 11, 12, wow, that, 13. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the reason being as our Pony League team went back to the Pony League World Series and I oh. set records back there. And I look in the record books and I go, oh, that guy either did or does mm -hmm. play in the major leagues. So, um, you know, my attitude was if they could do it, I can. And okay. I mean, I know when I signed with the Tigers, mm -hmm. you know, I was not a very boisterous or cocky kid, but inside I believed in myself. Yeah. And yeah. I remember when um, the Tigers came to my house to sign me and I'd I just, you know, my attitude is, you know, I'm not messing around. I'm, I'm going to be a star and, you know, I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those things didn't happen, but, you know, I feel like I had a, a very uh, productive, good career mm -hmm. and I got hurt pretty bad. So that's mm -hmm. the way it goes. Yeah. And yeah. I was blessed well. to, you know, to have done what I did. And mm -hmm. my baseball talent, you know, I don't need to harp on it, but my talent came from God. You know, if you ask Rod Dato, Rod would have told anybody. He did tell people, you know, because I did a lot of things wrong in my swing. I had a huge hitch, and people, they didn't say to Rod, are you going to change him? What are you going to do? And Rod would go, y you don't mess with him. Yeah, you yeah, let him yeah, hit yeah, because, yeah. you know what, He's probably, he is the greatest pure mm -hmm, hitter mm -hmm. to ever come to through USC. USC. Yeah. Well, okay, now you're in high school. Did you think about signing out of high school, or did you think about going to college? Oh, I would have signed for a bus ticket. Would have you really? Yeah. But, I, uh, we had a, my junior year, we had a guy on our uh, high school team that was the mm -hmm. first player chosen by the Astros. I don't know what pick they had, maybe 10th, 12th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I got exposure, but no one drafted me after my mm -hmm. senior year, and I hit over 400 my senior year, and and people said I was just too small. Were you 
Was the was your high school in the CIF or the city? It was CIF. CIF. Yeah. And I actually I was on the uh, north south. Um, yeah. I was yeah. on the south team, mm -hmm. and uh, my high school coach wasn't very uh, uh, supportive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know because of the things I did in college, mm -hmm. I had college coaches come up to me and say, "I could have had you come to our school." I talked to your high school coach, but he said that you wouldn't uh, be able to cut it. Oh, my God. And, you know, that's why I'll say to any young kid, you believe in yourself. You don't let somebody tell you you can't do something. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as you have passion for something, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. baseball, but mm -hmm. have passion for something, Go for and it. you know and believe that you can do it, mm -hmm. then... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that, those are big ingredients, mm -hmm. huge. So, um, you know, so yeah, I would have signed for anything and mm -hmm. I didn't get drafted. And then I was mm -hmm. going to go to Pasadena city college and, um, Orrin Freeman saw me play and Justin did. And they asked me if I'd be interested in going to USC. Um, they didn't have any financial aid that they could provide, but. Uh, they said if I proved myself, I would be given some type of assistance, you know, my sophomore, junior, senior year. I told my dad and my mom, I said, I'll prove myself. And I said, I will earn a scholarship. And then, mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. it be, Rod actually gave yeah. me mm -hmm. a full mm -hmm. ride my sophomore year because of the things that I, I think, proved to him that I could do. Mm -hmm. Were you a good student? Uh, we'll go into another subject. <laughs> you, you know what? Enough I got, so that you got in. You, you I, 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 oh, I got in, and I think I, I mean, yeah. obviously they could make things happen, but yeah. no, I wasn't yeah. a terrible yeah. student. Yeah. What really with me, I, I think I'm an intelligent person, but I, I just was so focused was on my other, sports, other and I, I didn't apply myself like I wish I would have, mm -hmm. um, but um, I... Um, can't complain. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. So now you're at SC, and you did you did they have frosh ball, or did you go right to the varsity, or did they allow you to play varsity ball as a freshman? Uh, as a freshman, you really it was just I think the first year that they allowed freshmen to play at, for the first or second year, right? Yeah. And it was almost like with UCLA basketball. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. with Wooden and his teams, you weren't going to be on. You have to pay your no. dues. And yeah. it was yeah. kind of that way here at SC. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I played on the mm -hmm. freshman team. And it was good, though, because we got to all know each other. And uh, we just developed uh, a rapport and a, a relationship that, you know, allowed us to bond for mm -hmm. the future years. And mm -hmm. You know, we still went on to win two national championships, you know, my right. sophomore and junior year. Right. Was there any... Our sophomore and our... What are my... No, freshman and sophomore year, yeah. we won championships. And my freshman year, I did get 10 at-bats on the varsity, and I was basically on the team. But I, I played most of the year on the mm -hmm. freshman team. Was there any particular team that, that, that was more fun than the other? Any college team? Yeah, college. In, in, in the 73 and 74 teams, both won national championships. Is it anything special or different? Well, one on the, the 73 other? team, I, again, I, I grew up to be respectful, and I didn't mm -hmm. say a whole lot yeah. you know, with yeah. the guys that were on that team. And actually, when it came time for me to take batting practice, everybody was gone. I had to pretty much shag my own balls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they didn't have batting cages. Right? Yeah, and I... I Things. Yeah, I told everybody, just joking, I go, that's why I turned into a singles hitter, because I had to shag my own balls, I didn't want to have yeah. to go too far <laughs> to get them, no. but yeah. basically, um, you know, those guys are guys that took me under their wing, and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it wasn't that I was their buddy and hung mm -hmm. out with them, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was... Um, you just, you paid your dues, you earned your stripes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then my sophomore and junior year, yeah, our team was together as freshmen, yeah. all yeah. of us. Yeah.
when, when does the when did aluminum bats come in, uh, Steve? Were you were they there when you were there, or did they? Yeah, actually, I think my my freshman year I used wood bat. I might have they and may have had it. aluminum, and then I think my sophomore year we may have had the aluminum bat. And but it was funny because I had an aluminum bat. No one else used it. Was really heavy. It was like a wood bat. Yeah. And I just didn't want to use a real light bat. And it's it's funny because even when I went and played summer ball, I took that bat with me. Yeah. And no one else really liked it because it was heavy. And I think that made my transition from college uh, to pro ball pretty easy because I f didn't feel a difference in the weight of a bat. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, bats you know that were aluminum were really lightweight. Do you have any special thoughts about Rod Dato? I mean, he 12, 11 national championships. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different things to say about him. What was your, what's your reaction to Rod? Was he, how did he treat you? And what's your thoughts about him as a, a coach? Well, I get goosebumps because Rod was like a father to me, and I could talk forever. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's baseball stuff or our human stuff, human being stuff mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just whatever. Um, he opened the door for me and and I took advantage of the talent that the Lord gave me and I worked hard and it was enjoyable mm -hmm. because I had a passion for the game. But Rod is the one mm -hmm. that made mm -hmm. sure that people knew who I was, mm -hmm. the right people. I mean, I didn't get drafted at all out of high school. Didn't mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. have somebody say, do you want to even sign to be in the number one pick in the nation out of college? So and that's you were number one out of the college? The first player chosen. Okay. And, I mean, it happened because of some things that happened here on the field, but Rod made sure people knew who I was. But it was mm -hmm. more than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rod was like a father to me. He treated us like men. I'm sure if uh, he was coaching today, some of the things that we did as a team and with him even at times probably wouldn't have gone over real well. But, you know, we respected Rod and we loved him and we gave all we had for him and he did the same for us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he um, went to bat for us and, um, you know, he was a great leader. And and I guarantee you one thing, I don't think uh, Rod uh, missed a day of living. No, I don't think he did either. He, he lived life loved, to the fullest. And that was the great thing about him. He, he made us want to do the same. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish I had half of the energy he had probably when he was 60 or 70 when I was 40. Mm -hmm. uh, that guy just... I, I, I can't say enough uh -huh. good things about Rod, and he'll he'll be with us forever. Yeah. And when I say us, I mean yeah. the Trojan family. Right. And right. Uh, he's he's a icon, and deservedly so. And so now you you graduated or leaving SC, and um, you're going to play professional ball. What was your thoughts, and where did you go originally? And then ultimately, what do you think was the biggest difference between college and pro ball for you when you started out? Um, well, I got drafted by the Tigers, uh, like I said, and then um, I went to major league camp. I signed a major league contract, okay. uh, which is one of the mm -hmm. first at that time. Uh, right out of college, um, and I think the probably to me, I didn't feel there was a huge adjustment. Okay. You know, I I just felt like I was doing what I love to do, mm -hmm. and um, I think Rod prepared me or all of us for that next step and I didn't feel intimidated or threatened I knew I belonged mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I also mm -hmm. showed respect mm -hmm. to um, 
you know, the people that had been there before me. And I had a lot of people in Detroit that, you know, made sure I learned what it's all about being a major league baseball player. Not so much about what your talent is on the field, but, mm -hmm. you know, how to mm -hmm. handle yourself. And um, so mm -hmm. I um, felt very... Um, mm -hmm comfortable i guess mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. you know and i played with guys i mean freddie had already been in the league for a year or two and yeah and was doing phenomenal things and so i was i i can do that too okay and uh a lot of the the people don't know about your professional career what happened to you from a professional ball player and injury and so forth what should you tell everybody well you know i went and signed with Detroit and I had some very productive years. My first six years, I think I was averaging, you know, like a 285 or 290 batting average with mm -hmm. over 20 home runs and over 90 RBIs. Um, and uh, then I, I could have tried to stay in Detroit, but we were getting nowhere with a long-term contract. I got traded to the White Sox. I played there one year. Mm -hmm. uh, then I became a free agent, signed with the Yankees, and started off really well there, uh, which was no big deal for me to be playing in New York. I, I didn't look at that as um, intimidating or um, you know mm -hmm. a scary place to be. If anything, I look forward to it. Right. And um, then I got hurt, and I mm -hmm. I had a collision, and I hurt my shoulder, and I um, kept playing with it. And then at the, uh, you know, and I didn't wasn't doing what I wanted. I I lost the ability because my shoulder was still messed up um, to really be able to have the extension that I was used to having, but then I ended up um, right in September, I think I was um, um, walking to the outfield during batting practice and someone hit a ball and someone yelled heads up and I turned around and I got hit in the left eye with a line drive, hit me square in the eye and I spent about a week in the hospital as an in intensive care and I lost vision in my left eye, which in turn, you know, made it a lot more difficult for me to hit Absolutely. because I lost my depth perception. I never, all the years I played, I never ever had a fear of walking up to the plate. And I always felt like I, you know, was going to hit the ball hard. I couldn't guarantee I was going to get a hit. And there's times you strike out. But after that, I kind of like, this is hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't quite as comfortable and, um, you know, I just, because of not having the vision and stuff, I really uh, um, yeah. was in a whole different arena then. Okay. Well, a um, couple more questions, Steve. If There's a lot of young people going to be seeing this video from time to time. And if you were to give them some advice about uh, kids that want to play professional ball or go to school and play ball what what would you tell a young kid today uh, from an advice standpoint well i don't know how long the video is going to be around in the archives yeah you know, i may say something long time. 50 years from now a kid will go god yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh <laughs> basically i would say this uh you know we all have dreams and, or we should, you should definitely have dreams when you're growing up and your dreams will usually take you to where you have a passion. And again, we talked about it earlier. And if, if you have a passion to do something and you're willing to work because you will want to work, it won't be work. You'll mm -hmm. put the time in because you love doing it. Yeah. Um, and follow your dreams and follow your passion and and stay with it and don't let somebody take it away from you and i'm not talking about just somebody telling you you can't do something that's number one 
but but also don't l get involved with the wrong people don't get caught up in things that will take you away from doing you know or following those dreams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't mean uh, you know that you stop living and you just live for that passion no you you try to expand and you learn different things and you know your education is is huge you know and as years go on 10 years 15 years 20 years from now and education is even going to be more important i know when i graduate or when i was at sc i only went for three years mm -hmm. but if you had your degree it opened the door for mm -hmm. to do some things these kids today it's 2015 a degree is not going to open the door for you to necessarily mm -hmm. um have an opportunity to go into the field that you got your degree but still you know uh, I wish I would have gotten more out of what was there for me mm -hmm. um, to do from an educational standpoint and um, I think that you know the key is allow yourself to dream okay you know if, if you had um if you could live your life over, is there anything you'd do differently? Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. I'm sure all of us could say, well, I wish I didn't do that yeah. on that particular yeah. day. Yeah. I've been blessed. Okay. I've had a great life. Yeah. I've had not everything go my way or be the best, but I am so thankful for what um, I've been able to achieve. I'm thankful for the people I've met in my life and I'm thankful um, for the experiences that I've had. Um, and I, I guess I just hope that I can continue to go through and um, hopefully make a difference if it's one person or mm -hmm. ten people, but mm -hmm. to try to make a little bit of a difference in someone's life. Steve, if, uh, if not the greatest hitter in USC history, you have to be one of the, the one, two best hitters in the baseball history of USC. You've been a great ball player. You've had a great success. What do you think it is that about you that's, that's driven you or made you achieve the success that you have achieved? Well, first off, I appreciate you complimenting me like you have you probably said that on all the other tapes too yeah. so no <laughs> but uh no i appreciate that and with the rich rich history here that's something i mean i i wouldn't say i was the best or one of the best but i know that i um achieved certain things and i'm very very proud of it and coming from usc and and all the the support that you have from alumni. I'm not just talking baseball people, but just the USC family. I live in Orange County. Mm -hmm. There's so many mm -hmm. SC people down there and, and they're drawn to, you know, if they know that it, who I am or what I did, that they want to hear stories mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, that opens doors and that's a way to maybe make a difference in mm -hmm. people's lives. Mm -hmm. I um, can just say this, um, and we've, I've already mentioned it a bunch of times, but I've been blessed mm -hmm. and, uh, I think that God wanted to take me down the direction that he did and he has a plan for me. And I, you, sometimes you think you know what the plan is or you think you know where you're going and, <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, if something happens mm -hmm. and you're going, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, but basically, um, I, um, just feel that, um, a passion, hard work and being blessed is what put me in the, whatever you want to say, top one, two, three, four, five, um, mm -hmm. at a school that has unbelievable tradition Yes, it does. and great people that are involved in it. Like for instance, what you do to just try to keep um, baseball alive, um, SC baseball alive, it is awesome. Thank you.
Steve, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, and fight on. All right, Ken. Fight Thanks. on.